What is climate change? Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. But since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to burning fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. The consequences of climate change now include, among others, intense droughts, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, flooding, melting polar ice, catastrophic storms and declining biodiversity. Earth's climate has changed throughout history. Just in the last 800,000 years, there have been eight cycles of ice ages and warmer periods, with the end of the last ice age about 11,700 years ago, marking the beginning of the modern climate era and of human civilization. Most of these climate changes are attributed to very small variations in Earth's orbit that change the amount of solar energy our planet receives. In the 2000s, the term climate change increased in popularity. Global warming usually refers to human-induced warming of the Earth system, whereas climate change can refer to natural or anthropogenic change. The two terms are often used interchangeably. Greenhouse gas concentrations are at their highest levels in 2 million years. The current warming trend is different because it is clearly the result of human activities since the mid-1800s and is proceeding at a rate not seen over many recent millennia, and emissions continue to rise. As a result, the Earth is now about 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than it was in the late 1800s. The last decade, 2011 to 2020, was the warmest on record. It is undeniable that human activities have produced the atmospheric gases that have trapped more of the sun's energy in the Earth system. This extra energy has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land, and widespread and rapid changes in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere, and biosphere have occurred. Burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gas emissions that act like a blanket wrapped around the Earth trapping the sun's heat and raising temperatures. Examples of greenhouse gas emissions that are causing climate change include carbon dioxide and methane. These come from using gasoline for driving a car or coal for heating a building. Clearing land and forests can also release carbon dioxide. Landfills for garbage are a major source of methane emissions. Energy, industry, transport, buildings, agriculture and land use are among the main emitters. Do scientists agree on climate change? Forward slash dot, Earth orbiting satellites and new technologies have helped scientists see the big picture, collecting many different types of information about our planet and its climate all over the world. These data, collected over many years, reveal the signs and patterns of a changing climate. Scientists have high confidence that global temperatures will continue to rise for many decades, mainly due to greenhouse gases produced by human activities. Some changes, such as droughts, wildfires, and extreme rainfall, are happening faster than scientists previously assessed. People are experiencing climate change in diverse ways. Many people think climate change mainly means warmer temperatures. But temperature rise is only the beginning of the story. Because the Earth is a system where everything is connected, changes in one area can influence changes in all others. Global climate change is not a future problem. Changes to Earth's climate driven by increased human emissions of heat-trapping greenhouse gases are already having widespread effects on the environment. Glaciers and ice sheets are shrinking, River and lake ice is breaking up earlier, plant and animal geographic ranges are shifting, and plants and trees are blooming sooner. Effects that scientists had long predicted would result from global climate change are now occurring, such as sea ice loss, accelerated sea level rise, and longer, more intense heat waves. Climate change can affect our health, ability to grow food, housing, safety, and work. Some of us are already more vulnerable to climate impacts, such as people living in small island nations and other developing countries. 
Conditions like sea level rise and saltwater intrusion have advanced to the point where whole communities have had to relocate, and protracted droughts are putting people at risk of famine. In the future, the number of climate refugees is expected to rise. COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 2019, COVID-19, is a contagious disease caused by a virus, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. The first known case was identified in Wuhan, China, in December 2019. The disease quickly spread worldwide, resulting in the COVID-19 pandemic. Symptoms of COVID-19 are variable, but often include fever, cough, headache, fatigue, breathing difficulties, loss of smell, and loss of taste. Symptoms may begin 1 to 14 days after exposure to the virus. At least a third of people who are infected do not develop noticeable symptoms. Of those people who develop symptoms noticeable enough to be classed as patients, most, 81%, develop mild to moderate symptoms, up to mild pneumonia, while 14% develop severe symptoms, dyspnea, hypoxia, or more than 50% lung involvement on imaging, and 5% develop critical symptoms, respiratory failure, shock, or multi-organ dysfunction. Older people are at a higher risk of developing severe symptoms. Some people continue to experience a range of effects, long COVID, four months after recovery, and damage to organs has been observed. Multi-year studies are underway to further investigate the long-term effects of the disease. COVID-19 transmits when people breathe air contaminated by droplets and small airborne particles containing the virus. The risk of breathing these is highest when people are in close proximity, but they can be inhaled over longer distances, particularly indoors. Transmission can also occur if splashed or sprayed with contaminated fluids in the eyes, nose or mouth, and, rarely, via contaminated surfaces. People remain contagious for up to 20 days and can spread the virus even if they do not develop symptoms. COVID-19 testing methods to detect the virus's nucleic acid include real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, RRT-PCR, transcription-mediated amplification, and reverse transcription loop-mediated isothermal amplification, RTLAMP, from a nasopharyngeal swab. Several COVID-19 vaccines have been approved and distributed in various countries, which have initiated mass vaccination campaigns. Other preventive measures include physical or social distancing, quarantining, ventilation of indoor spaces, covering coughs and sneezes, hand washing, and keeping unwashed hands away from the face. The use of face masks or coverings has been recommended in public settings to minimize the risk of transmission. While work is underway to develop drugs that inhibit the virus, the primary treatment is symptomatic. Management involves the treatment of symptoms, supportive care, isolation, and experimental measures. Nomenclature, during the initial outbreak in Wuhan, the virus and disease were commonly referred to as coronavirus and Wuhan coronavirus, with the disease sometimes called Wuhan pneumonia. In the past, many diseases have been named after geographical locations, such as the Spanish flu, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and Zika virus. In January 2020, the World Health Organization, who recommended 2019 NCOV and 2019 NCOV acute respiratory disease as interim names for the virus and disease per 2015 guidance and international guidelines against using geographical locations or groups of people in disease and virus names to prevent social stigma. The official names COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 were issued by the WHO on February 11, 2020. The Director General, Tedros Adhanom, explained that CO stands for Corona, VI for Virus, D for Disease, and 19 for 2019, the year in which the outbreak was first identified. The WHO additionally uses the COVID-19 virus and the virus responsible for COVID-19 in public communications. Transmission, COVID-19 is mainly transmitted when people breathe in air contaminated by droplets-slash-aerosols and small airborne particles containing the virus. Infected people exhale those particles as they breathe, talk, 
cough, sneeze, or sing. Transmission is more likely the more physically close people are. However, infection can occur over longer distances, particularly indoors. Infectivity can begin four to five days before the onset of symptoms, although contact tracing typically begins only two to three days before symptom onset. Infected people can spread the disease even if they are pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic. Most commonly, the peak viral load in upper respiratory tract samples occurs close to the time of symptom onset and declines after the first week after symptoms begin. Current evidence suggests a duration of viral shedding and the period of infectiousness of up to 10 days following symptom onset for people with mild to moderate COVID-19 and up to 20 days for persons with severe COVID-19, including immunocompromised people. Infectious particles range in size from aerosols that remain suspended in the air for long periods of time to larger droplets that remain airborne briefly or fall to the ground. Additionally, COVID-19 research has redefined the traditional understanding of how respiratory viruses are transmitted. The largest droplets of respiratory fluid do not travel far, but can be inhaled or land on mucous membranes on the eyes, nose, or mouth to infect. Aerosols are highest in concentration when people are in close proximity, which leads to easier viral transmission when people are physically close, but airborne transmission can occur at longer distances, mainly in locations that are poorly ventilated, in those conditions small particles can remain suspended in the air for minutes to hours. Signs and Symptoms Symptoms of COVID-19 The symptoms of COVID-19 are variable depending on the type of variant contracted, ranging from mild symptoms to critical and possibly fatal illness. Common symptoms include coughing, fever, loss of smell, anosmia, and taste, agusia, with less common ones including headaches, nasal congestion and runny nose, muscle pain, sore throat, diarrhea, eye irritation, and toes swelling or turning purple, and in moderate to severe cases, breathing difficulties. People with the COVID-19 infection may have different symptoms, and their symptoms may change over time. Three common clusters of symptoms have been identified, one respiratory symptom cluster with cough, sputum, shortness of breath, and fever, a musculoskeletal symptom cluster with muscle and joint pain, headache, and fatigue, a cluster of digestive symptoms with abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. In people without prior ear, nose, and throat disorders, loss of taste combined with loss of smell is associated with COVID-19 and is reported in as many as 88% of symptomatic cases. Of people who show symptoms, 81% develop only mild to moderate symptoms, up to mild pneumonia, while 14% develop severe symptoms, dyspnea, hypoxia, or more than 50% lung involvement on imaging, which requiring hospitalization and 5% of patients develop critical symptoms, respiratory failure, septic shock, or multi-organ dysfunction, requiring ICU admission. At least a third of the people who are infected with the virus do not develop noticeable symptoms at any point in time. These asymptomatic carriers tend not to get tested and can still spread the disease. Other infected people will develop symptoms later, called pre-symptomatic, or have very mild symptoms and can also spread the virus. As is common with infections, there is a delay between the moment a person first becomes infected and the appearance of the first symptoms. The median delay for COVID-19 is four to five days possibly being infectious on one to four of those days. Most symptomatic people experience symptoms within two to seven days after exposure, and almost all will experience at least one symptom within 12 days. Most people recover from the acute phase of the disease. However, some people, over half of a cohort of home-isolated young adults identified in June 2021, continued to experience a range of effects, such as fatigue, four months even after recovery, a condition called long COVID, long-term damage to organs has been observed. Multi-year studies are underway to further investigate the potential long-term effects of the disease. The Omicron variant became dominant in the U.S. starting in December 2021. 
Symptoms with the Omicron variant are less severe as they are with other variants. Longer-term effects, multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, following the infection, children may develop multi-system inflammatory syndrome, also called pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome. This has symptoms similar to Kawasaki disease, which can possibly be fatal. Long COVID, some early studies suggest that 10 to 20 percent of people with COVID-19 will experience symptoms lasting longer than a month. A majority of those who were admitted to hospital with severe disease report long-term problems, including fatigue and shortness of breath. About 5 to 10 percent of patients admitted to hospital progress to severe or critical disease, including pneumonia and acute respiratory failure. By a variety of mechanisms, the lungs are the organs most affected in COVID-19. In people requiring hospital admission, up to 98% of CT scans performed show lung abnormalities after 28 days of illness even if they had clinically improved. People with advanced age, severe disease, prolonged ICU stays, or who smoke are more likely to have long-lasting effects, including pulmonary fibrosis. Overall, approximately one-third of those investigated after four weeks will have findings of pulmonary fibrosis or reduced lung function as measured by DLCO, even in asymptomatic people, but with the suggestion of continuing improvement with the passing of more time. After severe disease, lung function can take anywhere from three months to a year or more to return to previous levels, the risk of psychotic disorder, cognitive deficit, dementia, and epilepsy or seizures persists at an increased level two years after infection. Prevention Preventive measures to reduce the chances of infection include getting vaccinated, staying at home, wearing a mask in public, avoiding crowded places, keeping distance from others, ventilating indoor spaces, managing potential exposure durations, washing hands with soap and water often and for at least 20 seconds, cleaning surfaces with soap or detergent, healthy diet and lifestyle, practicing good respiratory hygiene, self-isolation at home, and avoiding touching the eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands. Those diagnosed with COVID-19 or who believe they may be infected are advised by the CDC to stay home except to get medical care, call ahead before visiting a healthcare provider, wear a face mask before entering the healthcare provider's office and when in any room or vehicle with another person, cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue, regularly wash hands with soap and water and avoid sharing personal household items. The first COVID-19 vaccine was granted regulatory approval on December 2, 2020 by the UK medicines regulator MHRA. It was evaluated for emergency use authorization EUA, status by the US FDA and in several other countries. Initially, the US National Institutes of Health guidelines do not recommend any medication for prevention of COVID-19 before or after exposure to the SARS-CoV-2 virus outside the setting of a clinical trial. Without a vaccine, other prophylactic measures or effective treatments a key part of managing COVID-19 is trying to decrease and delay the epidemic peak, known as flattening the curve. This is done by slowing the infection rate to decrease the risk of health services being overwhelmed, allowing for better treatment of active cases, and delaying additional cases until effective treatments or a vaccine become available. Vaccine, a COVID-19 vaccine is a vaccine intended to provide acquired immunity against severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, an established body of knowledge existed about the structure and function of coronaviruses causing diseases like severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. This knowledge accelerated the development of various vaccine platforms during early 2020. The initial focus of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines was on preventing symptomatic, often severe illness. On January 10, 2020, the SARS-CoV-2 genetic sequence data was shared through GISED, and by March 19, 
the global pharmaceutical industry announced a major commitment to address COVID-19. In 2020, the first COVID-19 vaccines were developed and made available to the public through emergency use authorization. Initially, most COVID-19 vaccines were two-dose vaccines, with the sole exception being the single-dose Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. However, immunity from the vaccines has been found to wane over time, requiring people to get booster doses of the vaccine to maintain immunity against COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccines are widely credited for their role in reducing the spread of COVID-19 and reducing the severity and death caused by COVID-19, though some people have still managed to get the virus even after being vaccinated. According to a June 2022 study, COVID-19 vaccines prevented an additional 14.4 to 19.8 million deaths in 185 countries and territories from December 8, 2020 to December 8, 2021. Many countries implemented phase distribution plans that prioritized those at highest risk of complications, such as the elderly, and those at high risk of exposure and transmission, such as healthcare workers. Common side effects of COVID-19 vaccines include soreness, redness, rash, inflammation at the injection site, fatigue, headache, myalgia, muscle pain, and arthralgia, joint pain, which resolve without medical treatment within a few days. COVID-19 vaccines are not associated with a higher risk of adverse effects during pregnancy or while breastfeeding. Temporary changes to the menstrual cycle in young women have been reported although these changes are small compared with natural variation and quickly reverse. Serious adverse events associated COVID-19 vaccines, such as allergic reactions, are generally rare but of high interest to the public. Because COVID-19 vaccines are relatively new, new claims about possible side effects are still being made, and sometimes reports conflict. Digital Currency Digital currency, digital money, electronic money, or electronic currency, is any currency, money, or money-like asset that is primarily managed, stored or exchanged on digital computer systems, especially over the Internet. Types of digital currencies include cryptocurrency, virtual currency, and central bank digital currency. Digital currency may be recorded on a distributed database on the Internet, a centralized electronic computer database owned by a company or bank, within digital files or even on a stored value card. Digital currencies exhibit properties similar to traditional currencies, but generally do not have a physical form, unlike currencies with printed banknotes or minted coins. This lack of physical form allows nearly instantaneous transactions over the Internet, and removes the cost associated with distributing notes and coins. Usually not issued by a governmental body, virtual currencies are not considered a legal tender and they enable ownership transfer across governmental borders. This type of currency may be used to buy physical goods and services, but may also be restricted to certain communities such as for use inside an online game, digital money can either be centralized, where there is a central point of control over the money supply, for instance, a bank, or decentralized, where the control over the money supply is predetermined or agreed upon democratically. History In 1983, a research paper by David Chom introduced the idea of digital cash. In 1989, he founded DigiCash, an electronic cash company, in Amsterdam to commercialize the ideas in his research. The company then declared bankruptcy in 1998. Origins of digital currencies date back to the 1990s dot-com bubble. E-gold was the first widely used internet money, introduced in 1996, and grew to several million users before the U.S. government shut it down in 2008. E-gold has been referenced to as digital currency by both U.S. officials and academia. In 2008, Bitcoin was launched, which marked the start of decentralized blockchain-based digital currencies with no central server and no tangible assets held in reserve. Also known as cryptocurrencies, 
blockchain-based digital currencies proved resistant to attempt by government to regulate them, because there was no central organization or person with the power to turn them off. Several digital currency operations were reputed to be used for Ponzi schemes and money laundering, and were prosecuted by the U.S. government for operating without MSB licenses. Recent interest in cryptocurrencies has prompted renewed interest in digital currencies, with Bitcoin, introduced in 2008, becoming the most widely used and accepted digital currency, in the period 2009 to 2010, nearly 100 other digital currencies were born. And by 2020, the world has more than 5,400 cryptocurrencies. Types of Digital Currency Virtual Currency According to the European Central Bank's 2015 Virtual Currency Schemes, a further analysis report, virtual currency is a digital representation of value, not issued by a central bank, credit institution or e-money institution, which, in some circumstances, can be used as an alternative to money. In the previous report of October 2012, the virtual currency was defined as a type of unregulated, digital money, which is issued and usually controlled by its developers, and used and accepted among the members of a specific virtual community. The U.S. Department of Treasury in 2013 defined it more tersely as, a medium of exchange that operates like a currency in some environments, but does not have all the attributes of real currency. They also stated that, virtual currency does not have legal tender status in any jurisdiction. Digital currency, according to the Bank for International Settlements November 2015, Digital Currencies Report, it is an asset represented in digital form and having some monetary characteristics. Digital currency can be denominated to a sovereign currency, and issued by the issuer responsible to redeem digital money for cash. In that case, digital currency represents electronic money, e-money. Digital currency denominated in its own units of value or with decentralized or automatic issuance will be considered as a virtual currency. As such, Bitcoin is a digital currency but also a type of virtual currency. Bitcoin and its alternatives are based on cryptographic algorithms, so these kinds of virtual currencies are also called cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is a subtype of digital currency and a digital asset that relies on cryptography to chain together digital signatures of asset transfers, peer-to-peer -peer networking and decentralization. In some cases a proof-of-work or proof-of-stake scheme is used to create and manage the currency. Cryptocurrencies can allow electronic money systems to be decentralized. When implemented with a blockchain, the digital ledger system or record-keeping system uses cryptography to edit separate shards of database entries that are distributed across many separate servers. The first and most popular system is Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic monetary system based on cryptography. Types of Systems Centralized Systems Currency can be exchanged electronically using debit cards and credit cards using electronic funds transfer at point of sale. Mobile digital wallets. A number of electronic money systems use contactless payment transfer in order to facilitate easy payment and give the payee more confidence in not letting go of their electronic wallet during the transaction. In 1994 Mondex and National Westminster Bank provided an electronic purse to residents of Swindon. In about 2005, Telefonica and BBVA Bank launched a payment system in Spain called Mobipay which used simple short message service facilities of feature phones intended for pay-as-you-go services, including taxis and prepay phone recharges via a BBVA current bank account debit. In January 2010, Venmo launched as a mobile payment system through SMS, which transformed into a social app where friends can pay each other for minor expenses like a cup of coffee, rent and pay a share of the restaurant bill when one has forgotten their wallet. It is popular with college students, but has some security issues. It can be linked to a bank account, 
credit slash debit card or have a loaded value to limit the amount of loss in case of a security breach. Credit cards and non-major debit cards incur a 3% processing fee. On September 19, 2011, Google Wallet released in the United States to make it easy to carry all one's credit slash debit cards on a phone, in 2012 Ireland's O2, owned by Telefonica, launched EasyTrip to pay road tolls which were charged to the mobile phone account or prepay credit. The UK's O2 invented O2 Wallet at about the same time. The wallet can be charged with regular bank accounts or cards and discharged by participating retailers using a technique known as money messages. The service closed in 2014. On September 9, 2014, Apple Pay was announced at the iPhone 6 event. In October 2014 it was released as an update to work on iPhone 6 and Apple Watch. It is very similar to Google Wallet but for Apple devices only. Decentralized systems, digital currency has been implemented in some cases as a decentralized system of any combination of currency issuance, ownership record, ownership transfer authorization and validation, and currency storage. Per the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, these schemes do not distinguish between users based on location, and therefore allow value to be transferred between users across borders. Moreover, the speed of a transaction is not conditional on the location of the payer and payee. Law Since 2001, the European Union has implemented the e-money directive on the taking up, pursuit and prudential supervision of the business of electronic money institutions last amended in 2009. Doubts on the real nature of EU electronic money have arisen, since calls have been made in connection with the 2007 EU Payment Services Directive in favor of merging payment institutions and electronic money institutions. Such a merger could mean that electronic money is of the same nature as bank money or scriptural money. In the United States, electronic money is governed by Article 4A of the Uniform Commercial Code for Wholesale Transactions and the Electronic Fund Transfer Act for Consumer Transactions. Providers' responsibility and consumers' liability are regulated under Regulation E. Regulation, virtual currencies pose challenges for central banks, financial regulators, departments or ministries of finance, as well as fiscal authorities and statistical authorities. Adoption by governments, as of 2016, over 24 countries are investing in distributed ledger technologies, DLT, with $1.4 billion in investments. In addition, over 90 central banks are engaged in distributed ledger technologies discussions, including implications of a central bank-issued digital currency.